right now. My, uh, my eyes got plucked, plucked out. A CBS 4 News exclusive. He just ripped me to ribbons. He chewed at my face. For the very first time, we hear what happened on that causeway. Ronald Popo, in his own words, the victim of a cannibal attack. Good evening, I'm Elliot Rodriguez in for Antonio Mora. It's the story that made headlines around the world. Memorial Day weekend. Ronald Popo, a homeless man, his face chewed off in an attack that no one could understand. This is a story CBS4 investigator Jim DeFiti has been working since it broke. Now listen carefully to Ronald Popo describe in vivid detail what happened when he met Rudy Eugene. He attacked me. He just ripped me to ribbons. He chewed at my face. He plucked out my eyes. But basically, that, that's all there is to say about him. That is the voice of Ronald Popo, victim of the so-called Causeway cannibal Rudy Eugene. For the first time, we are hearing Popo describe the vicious attack that occurred on the MacArthur Causeway Memorial Day weekend. For a very short amount of time, I thought he was a good guy, but he just went and turned from berserk. He, he apparently didn't have a good day at the beach, and he, he was coming back. And I, I guess he took it, out, took it out on me or something, I don't know. CBS 4 News obtained a copy of the July interview Miami Homicide Detectives conducted with Popo. I am Sergeant Williams of the City of Miami Homicide Unit. Here with me is Detective Frankie Sanchez. The interview took place at the Purdue Medical Center in South Dade, where Popo is now recovering from his injuries. Also here with us is Mr. Ronald Popo. Mr. Popo, can you raise your right hand? Certainly. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. So help you God. The July interview was led by Detective Sergeant Altar Williams. What was he saying when he was assaulting you? You, me, buddy, and nobody else here. I'm gonna, gonna kill you or something like that, I guess. Did he say why? No, he just started to scream. He was talking kind of funny talk for a while, too, yeah. What do you mean by funny talk? That I was gonna die and he was gonna die. He must have been souped up on something. The details of the attack still vivid in his mind. He so smashed my face into the uh, sidewalk. Uh, my, my face is all patched up. My, uh, my eyes got plucked, plucked out. He, he was strang strangling me in wrestling holes. At the same time, he was picking my eyes out. In a subsequent interview, Popple told detectives that Rudy Eugene blamed Popple for stealing his Bible. Pieces of Eugene's Bible were found scattered along the causeway. Popo said he never saw Eugene's Bible and denied taking it. Did Mr. Eugene have anything in his hands? No, Eugene did not have any type, type of weapon. He did not use any weapon on me. He basically was using brute, brute force. But before he attacked you, did he have any uh, clothes, any materials, any books no. or anything in his hands? I don't really recall him having anything. The interview reveals that Papa was confused about some details. He thought Rudy Eugene, for instance, had hitchhiked across the causeway when we know he walked. And although the attack left Papa blind in both eyes and undergoing occupational therapy to deal with the new realities of his life, Papa seems relatively resigned to what happened to him. He never raises his voice in the interview or becomes upset, but it's also something that he clearly does not enjoy talking about. Well, anyway. I'm getting kind of exhausted. Okay, I understand, I understand. Like I said, is there anything else you want to say that... Um... No, I thank the Miami Police Department for saving my life. That, that's about the best I could sum it up as. If they didn't get there in the nick of time, I would, would have definitely been in worse shape. Possibly I'd be DOA. Now this was actually the second of three interviews police did with Papo. The first was done on the day of the attack. The last was done as recently as last week. No more interviews are scheduled, and in fact, this now marks the end of the Miami Police Department's investigation of this sensational case. Jim, my initial reaction is how well composed Ronald Popo is during that interview. He just seems amazingly resigned to yes. what is going on. He doesn't want to talk about it. Several times in the interview, he talks about how I'm tired, I'm exhausted, can we wrap this up? So it obviously wears on him, but you know, you're right, he showed no real emotion. Are there more of these tapes? This was the only tape. Of the three interviews, they taped just this one. Now, coming up though, there's more to this tape that we're going to explore. As a matter of fact, tonight at 11, we've got a new information, more information from these tapes that we weren't able to fit here. In fact, I think we've got a little bit of sound of it right now. He, he has some kind of desperate preoccupation of a type. Did, like you, said, did you 
say anything to him to provoke him? Now, we'll have the answer to that question tonight at 11, along with there was media reports that said that suggested that maybe Eugene and Papo had met previously right. at a soup kitchen. We'll find out the answer to that tonight as well at 11. Looking forward to that report. Jim DeFitti, thank you very much.